what we do here is go back, back, back. To set up as best I can fast. So, any questions for the panel? How did you first hear about Jeff Hunt? Wait a minute. Oh, I think I, I think I answered that earlier, earlier through Sh Shavona. Yay. I don't remember when I first heard about it. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, because like, you know, like usually I think of conventions as like, oh, the one in New York, oh, the one in Boston, oh, the one in whatever. But like GemCon, it's it changes, so it's like like every year it like comes back on my radar. I'm like, oh yeah, GemCon. The one in Buffalo. <laughs> so I can't remember when I first heard about it. Um, I guess that's a terrible answer. <laughs> I have a question for Ruth. We talked out there about it. Um, on the picture of Synergy that you have, yes. she has her mouth open. Yes. Why is that? You know what? I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I was thinking of her singing. I might have been thinking of her singing. And it might have been that whole pouty look started back then. Yeah. It could have been something to do with that. But that's the best that I can remember. Wait, but what, what's what's weird about Synergy was her mouth open. It, I don't, we just, we, she, she, didn't, she didn't say, it was just the, the image on the TV. I thought maybe she was talking or, you know. She was probably was, yelling. Yeah. <laughs> Jerrica! <laughs> I answered it for you. There you go. Yes. <laughs> well, synergy was made in Mom's image. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alan, yeah. thank you for bringing all your contacts to the oh, yeah. awesome. have, you, have you connected with those ladies um, a lot over the years or just recently getting in touch? Like how, well, how Florence, close are you with Florence and Florence, Viva? I just, you know, like if I had known she was in Philadelphia when we crashed, um, I would have called her, but I didn't. So I just reconnected with Florence actually when I had the idea when, when um, Rachel asked me to come to this gem con. I thought, you know, that would that's that would be really fun. So I called, and then I found out she was in Philadelphia. Diva, I've talked to sporadically over the years more. So then, when I thought about the Florence, I said, let me call Diva, you know, and uh, and that's that. So this was really special. That's awesome! Thank you for doing that. You're for welcome. Us. Thank you. Question for Ellen. Um, did you, I, and I'm sorry if you've talked about this in past panels, this is only my second Gem Con, so. <laughs> Se second so far. So far. <laughs> That's right. Um, when you were approached to, and how, how were you approached to, hey, can you do vocals, lay down vocals for a kid's cartoon? Or did you know from the start that it would be, um, like what the plot structure was and right. who you'd be singing and did you know you would be singing from the start as pizzazz this the the nemesis um uh, i think ann may have touched on this a little bit earlier but it's hard to hear over the phone so when they first started the show they were looking for jim yeah but then they were also looking for the uh, pizzazz and i had a band at the time called Norma Human and the Body People. <laughs> I just saw that on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so so um, we we had we were like it was me, my brother and Dave Immer and I was basically the writer and and you know um, and, and I was a lead I was the writer and singer and and they were kind of these uh, it was a it was a punk rock like techno band. Oh, nice. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had done a demo, and we were we almost had this record deal with Jimmy Einer, but I uh, with Millennium Records, I think yeah. it was, but it fell through. But I had this, you know, these demos that we made, and I played "Don't Ask Questions" for Anne, and she's like, "That's pizzazz. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because I had known oh. Anne Pryor, you know, I, I, you know, but I, as she mentioned, I was known actually for like a beautiful voice, more of, you know, although I sang rock and I did all that, I wasn't known for this. <laughs> like, like, I would not, not. So this was like, it was like a character that I created for my punk rock band. And so she ended up realizing that was, a, that was like a great sound for pizzazz. So oh. she played it for the, the Joe Bacall, who was the crea creative director of uh, uh, Griff Griffin Bacall and Sunbow. And I think she mentioned she either either she, I don't know how she did it whether she told him before or after but she she played basically he said that's that's pizzazz that's it that's the sound and then she either told him before or after the well that's Ellen Bernfeld and she said Ellen Bernfeld she has this beautiful voice I didn't know she could do this. so that was it so basically they based the sound of the whole sound on my like, don't ask questions so I never got the record deal but I got pizzazz. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, I think longer lasted. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Much better. My song blossomed into this wonderful cartoon character is what happened. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, this question is for Ruth and Sophie. Uh, forgive me if you've already addressed this, but <laughs> have you watched the series from like start to finish? What's your favorite episode? How do you connect with the cartoon? <laughs> when your part has been with the toy line and the comic? Um, yeah, I've seen all the, the whole thing. Um, you know, I have the set or whatever. Um, God, what is my favorite episode? <laughs> uh, I really like the one where Minx tries to be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, what else? Um, yeah, because like, like, I don't know, you know, it's fun seeing Minx try to be good, but she's terrible at being nice. <laughs> and there's also the stuff at the beach, which I like. Um, God. No. I'm sure like, uh, I'm sure I'll think of like all these ones I like like as soon as I leave. Um, oh, I like the, I like the deserted island, what, like the jungle island one. That was something I wanted to do in the comic. I was like, I wanted to do a jungle island issue, but it didn't work out. Um, but yeah, I've seen, I've seen the whole thing, you know, like, uh, I kind of, I tried to watch them all as, like, for, like, research for the comic. Um, and, you know, sometimes I would just watch them with friends and stuff. So, yeah, I had definitely seen the whole thing. I have not. You have not It's much more pertinent for what she does. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly even watch any TV. I can't sit still long enough to watch it. I would rather be painting. I'm always working with my hands. Rarely do I sit, sit still to watch, you know, even even going to a movie. My it's husband hard. wants to. Yeah, yeah. And my husband will want to go to a movie, but then I have to go and sit there and watch it. It's hard for me to do that. I'm always working with my hands. So I'm always, but even reading. I don't like to read anymore. I read a lot as a kid, but I don't read now. I hate it. I'm like, hey, you know, so it's just, that's just who I am. <laughs> I have a question for Ruth. Yes. Because I've been mulling in my head about the posters, and your part was predominantly the back posters. Correct. Okay. So I remember that there was the Misfits poster yes. that had no printing on the back, and there were some versions of the original gem poster that had no printing on the back. Uh -huh. And then later we got the ones that had the printing on the back with the marketing and then the glitter and the gold. I, I'm just trying to get in my head time timeline wise if that was because the misfits and holograms with the no printing with, were released before other items, or was there some other timeline sequence that could have accounted for why that was? Oh, that's a tough question. I think um, um, that, that's a really tough question. Timeline-wise, I think they were pumping out ideas rather quickly, and as it went along, throwing those cross posters in there, you know, the one side is like 
you know, like what we see here, the one side is printed, and you have that illustration, the back side is the cross sell. And what I believe is they probably realize the cross sell is what sells the next product. So if they don't print the back side of the illustration, they're saving money on that four color print. Well, it's probably five or six color printing. So I suspect that's part of it. As far as the timeline goes, I, I don't know that I, I could say exactly other than they put, brought these things out in a relatively short amount of time. When you think of the amount of product that's out there and the amount of years that they were really only on the market, um, it's, a, it's a huge expense. I, I, I don't think it was within more than two years. Does, does that, did I answer it? Yeah, I, I guess I'm wondering if, like, maybe they had a first wave of the holograms of the misfits with the Novak, and then they realized and put it with subsequent products. It's possible. I would be more inclined to think that they started with the cross sell poster first. You know, the, of course, the the printed poster would be a selling feature because you know the kids get the doll, they hang the poster on the wall, and then it probably was an economy thing where they went to just the cross sell, so that you see what's going to be next on the market. Everything from what I experienced there, and I wasn't there that long. Everything they did it ended up being. It was always about a bottom line dollar value, everything. Yeah, like everywhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, sometimes they take the the art quality out of the equation. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, mean, yeah. I think I love the illustrations that Sharon Natal did. I love the illustrations from Judy Nelson. I saw some of the illustrations of the the other inside guys who were like salary, they weren't freelancing doing some of the sea ponies and that sort of thing. And I think the illustrations are beautiful, and I think it loses something when you just have the photography in the package, and that's just my opinion, but maybe it's because I love the art to begin with. You know, it, it doesn't do the same thing for me at all when I see photos on a box. The photo is on the box, the product is inside. Why put the photo on? The illustration animates it. it right. You know, the magic is gone. Yeah. 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 But as you said, <laughs> bottom line. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, and they do bad things for that too. Yeah. yeah. You know what else? What else I like? I like the the episode. <laughs> I like the episode where Kimber and Stormer form their own band. Yes. And I like the episode with the ski lodge. Yeah. Yes. That's That's cool. Cool. Yes. Very cool. This is this questions for Ellen. Was it hard to get the music for This Is Farewell knowing that was going to be the last song that oh. recorded? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, yeah, I think th that's like a, I remember that session. That was, because um, we all did that, we did it together, which was, well, I don't think Brito, yeah, I remember Gordon was there. Yeah, we were all there, I think, oh, as I remember. Wow. We did it, we did it, so. So I think so, but yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we were, it was too, we were sad that the show was going to end because we thought it was a great show yes. and it was fun to work on. We didn't watch it during, on Saturday, you know, I mean, it wasn't like, cause, as you said, eight, yeah, eight, you yeah. know, it was like, oh, I got to watch Jam on Saturday. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, we didn't realize that it was actually well, even, become they like, like, they even say lots well, of celebrities don't watch their movies that they produce. That's right. So, yeah. but movies. we had so much fun doing it, and then it was like, oh, the doll's too big; it doesn't fit on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have to put gem like on its side. <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, uh, or and you know, who knows what? But that was disappointing. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for Ruth. Do you have uh, any memories of when the line was canceled? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do you have any memory of, uh, if you were still working on Gem, when the line, the toy line was canceled? When the total line was canceled, it was canceled after I left there in mid-87, it was still going on then, so it had to be after I left there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Just, uh, yeah. That I do remember. Did you work, I missed your thing. Oh, yes. So did you work at Hasbro? I did. You did? I did. For, for, for about, not real long, for about three and a half years. For like 80, like 84? 84, 84, 5, 6, 7. So you were there for the, the birth of Jim? You were kind I, of I was, but I wasn't. I, like I said earlier, and I have to apologize for this, but I worked more, on more My Little Pony okay. than anything. They didn't hire me for My Little Pony, they hired me for Girls Toys, but as it turned out, they, I ended up doing more My Little Pony, and whenever something else came along, they gave it to me. So I did some gem and some okay. real baby, but the pony was the most 
that I, you know, I was most involved with. So I didn't always pay attention to exactly what was going on with all the lines. You, you, you couldn't. There was right. too much. You just had to concentrate on the work that you had. Right. You know, so right. I wasn't paying close attention attention to it. I do remember before I left how many toys, which seemed to be so wonderful. They thought they were going to go through, oh, they killed them. I mean, you heard really? that oh across the board for right. everything. It wasn't just ponies or jam. Or, it was, the, there was a moon baby type of thing. What were they? Moon they moon moon they moon got moon moon just was one after the other. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what's going on? But it had something to do with the stock market. And I, my brain doesn't work that way. I don't even like talking about it. But, you know, <laughs> it was. It's the bottom line thing. Right. Were you yeah. in Rhode Island? Or yes. You were in yes. Rhode Island? Yes. OK. Yeah. yeah. You were talking that you were there on the final recording of Farewell. Yeah. And you were saying that Gordon was there? Yeah. So who was, was is he on that or maybe yeah, that's another Well, he is. Yes. He was another male singer. Or was oh. he doing the other you know, male I don't, voice? Oh, no, yeah. I, I mean, you know, oh, I got to call. I have to talk to Ann. Yeah, let's call her up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what I mean. Do you remember? <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, really? Remember that one time? <laughs> You're asking me who was the, Gordon was there. Oh, well, wait a minute, at, was it, no, not at the the song, old. in the song, you know how, now we just found out that I'm, and I'm okay. Yeah. We all thought that whoever was singing Kimber was doing also Stormer. But now she just clarified that somebody else was doing yes. Stormer. Yes. But now we're wondering, was somebody else doing Rio? Because in the song, Rio sings. Oh. And so is Riot. Yeah, Riot, Riot. sang. I think it's like a misanimation. It yeah, could probably. be. Like, I think it's just Gordon singing for Ryan. It, it could yeah. be that. It could be that. It could have been. It's like the, the, uh, on the very end, I'm there's a, a, a stormer that has a, she says the last farewell. Uh, that's actually Florence Warner's voice. So, I'll try to find out. Okay. So Florence Warner was, yeah, I'll try to get to the bottom. I'm okay, but she was stormer and this is the one and this. It's like, because the animators didn't know which was which. They just heard a solo and they just put animated solo. Yeah. And the question oh. is, who was the singing voice of Rio yes. on yes. This yes. Is one Farewell? Line. Yes. yes. <laughs> Got it. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Well, she's, you know, she said, you know, she produced and, and, and she may have done, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I mean, possibly, I don't, you know, she wasn't part of the holograms or such, she'd come out and sing with us and teach us and, you know, sometimes she would do, you know, go on, but, you know, she, she just, uh, I don't know if she was a character, though, like a specific character, you know. <laughs> So, yeah. did the inspiration for Kimberly for and Stormer being lesbians come from the Jim and the Mammograms being used for you two? What? What? Hold on. I thought everybody would know it by now. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's dubbed. It's dubbed over. Somebody dubbed over John Upstairs. Kimberly and Stormer lesbians. Yeah. 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 Ye
So if you did you see the uh, clip they did with uh, the opening theme with uh, the design from the uh, comic book? Oh, no, I haven't. This sounds cool, though. It's, 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 uh, it's the same length as, as the opening theme, yeah. but they do it with the uh, characters from the comic book. That's cool. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that. I, I, I would like to see uh, who was the uh, initiative who decided to do that. Wait, do what? Do, do this bit. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. I've never seen it. It's on, it's on the, uh, Was it like an official thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> um, somebody somebody at the marketing department, I guess. Yeah, I have no idea. I've never seen it. It's, it's the same fashion as the opening credit of the series. Yeah. But it's with your design. That is cool. So wow. it, is it like is it like all yeah. these, like do they move like the still images or yeah, yeah they move the, the design are moving oh the okay or the lips yeah or well they definitely didn't consult me about it <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I completely forgotten but I don't I don't remember that I don't know I have a question for you so sure I, I have no idea how animation is put together these days I know it's not the cells of the old days but if is there any possibility that somebody like you might ever be approached with animation? And and or would you ever try and spearhead the opportunity to try and reanimate something? Um, like that? I think if I did, I would do storyboards. I don't because like I don't think I would would do the actual animation. I think that's like you know they you know they send a lot of that like you know to different studios or like a lot of animation is done in Korea and stuff like that. But like. I think it's so, time consuming. Yeah, yeah. Like very, like, yeah. yeah. It's very like you gotta you know, draw like every. I think I would blow my brains out. After yes. A while. <laughs> but um, I think if I was involved, you know, like you know, if I was involved with a gem show or something, I think I would definitely want to do some storyboards or something. Which um, you know, like that, that's like the core thing that happens, and then they do the storyboards and they give them to the animators, and then they kind of fill in the. Like, I don't know. I've never worked in animation, but I, you know, I know some animators, and I think that's kind of how it works. Um, how, how do animators like kind of what's like the type of a person, like an animator, rather than the like what you say it's up, but sorry, I'm not gonna call it an illustrator, right? Or, well, no, I know. Yeah, but what, what do you, a cartoon? Um, what, what, how, what do you call yourself? I don't know, like cartoonist. Usually. A cartoonist. So the animator, how would you say you know animators? How? What's the big difference between the to. Um, I, I feel like I feel like they complain a lot more than people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, just you know, like people in comics, we're always complaining about stuff too. But I feel like I feel like animators, like whenever I talk to one of my friends who does that, they're always like, they're always like, like the deadlines just sound so much worse than comics. Or they're like, oh yeah, like we animated half of this and then it got canceled. But it's like I've never drawn half of it, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, happened across all, I, all. I've never drawn creative half ideas. a comic and then it gets canceled. Like that sounds insane to me. Okay. But it seems like in you know animators they're just much more like, ah, you know, okay. kind of like yeah. frazzled all the time or something. Right. And I feel I feel like I'm just going nuts. And, yeah. And that, well, they don't they do they work on a computer all the time. Oh, and it's I don't like know. very. I yeah, do what I do, but yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. kind of yeah. Like, you know, I, have, like I have one friend who he does all his animation. I don't know what program it is, but it's right. all it's all it's on the computer. computer. On it's, the computer. Yeah, and they right. have like you know they have it's not three D, but they have like the character model, mm -hmm. and then they like move it around and they <coughs> spread it in different ways. Right. So I think like some animation is still drawn. I don't know if it's drawn on paper, but it's drawn on the computer. Right, okay, but right. I think some just have these models that they manipulate to right. so kind of save time. Right. Um, I don't know if that answers the question at all, but yes, I would love to be a showrunner or something. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Get somebody else to do all the all the work. <laughs> I know. Or just Nia. Yeah, like, well, I, I thought they animated Jim in like Korea or something. That's possible. Or, I don't know. Didn't they? I or something. 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 Or all right, the Japanese, I think, did a so better there job. Are, there are some yeah. differences. In, I think the administration is more smooth, but the design is a little more rough. In Korea. In Korea. Yeah. Some, some of those. Right. So I thought, like, were some of those, some of those 80s shows, like, in, like, done here in the States? Like, was it, like, Masters of the Universe animated, like, in-house? 
Yes, it was. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, like I wasn't sure if they did stuff like that in the gym, too. No. Well, I think they did it with the Transformers and the Eye Joy as well. Yeah. And sometimes they split it up, too. Like, people will do, like, the keyframes. And then they'll send it over to somebody else to film and everything, and then they'll send it back. Um, oh, it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> I have a question for the group. So we're obviously all starstruck having you guys here. Um, we're not something so near and dear to our hearts. Um, I'm just curious, um, have you guys ever been starstruck or met any celebrities in different fashions? And not literally fashions, oh, yeah. fashions. I just met <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I met, I was, I was dressed in this, this like, I look like I dress sometimes. I kind of I remind. I, I think I dress like a homeless person. <laughs> so I had one of my homeless looks uh, with a beret and this like old like parka parka. And I was in this. Uh, I think it was a. It was like a wine liquor store <laughs> in, in Rockland County. It was the winter time, and I came out. And it was Bill Murray. Okay, and so he looked at me. He like he liked my homeless look. He like was like, and I was like, and I had just written this song called Celebrity, and he was in it. I, it was like all these people. The song the song was like old now because they were all like, you know, and he was in it, and I I, I couldn't say a thing. I was like. You know, I didn't say anything. Oh, oh wow! I just, I was, yeah. Trevor, have you I'm trying to think. I think the only I met, um, I met Leonard Nimoy once, mm -hmm. but oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't feel like he was really approachable, so I didn't feel like, uh, like that. But I think, I think the only time I've ever really been like, just kind of like, uh, was when I met uh, Peter Laird, the co-creator of Ninja Turtles. And at the time, I had done some covers for uh, Turtles, and this was back before Nickelodeon owned the property and everything. And so I was like, you know, like I was at some con in New York, and I was just like, well, you know, I've done these covers. This is like the perfect in, right? Like I'm just gonna stroll up, and he's gonna, he's gonna know who I am because I did work for him. And so I stroll up. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I did this cover, blah blah blah, for you. And he had no idea what I was talking about. Right. <laughs> and it's like, you know, this was like, like I don't know if you guys follow Turtles or whatever, but like this was kind of right before Nickelodeon bought the property. So Peter Laird had like checked out, you know, yeah. and he had no idea what his publishing company was publishing. And like after my in was shot, like I was just like, <laughs> and I think I said, I think I think I said something like. Yeah, I really like the turtles, and then just, <laughs> just, you know, I just took off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh no, uh, uh, well, uh, new was in Star Trek. Yeah, I know that. Oh, oh, say, oh, is there, I that, like, This is a different story. This is a different story. Yeah, different. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My I'm list of sorry. out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that, that's the only time. And like, I don't. I try not to approach. People I like anymore because of that, you know. Because like I don't know, uh, that was just too horrible. So so, so dramatic. <laughs> well, I don't know. As for me, I don't know about being starstruck. I wouldn't say that, but I have met several celebrities when I lived in the Southwest. A lot of them used to kill. My husband and I had a shop for a while. We did like custom souvenirs and things. So do our design our own products. We had several celebrities come in our shop. They always act very cool. As long as people don't bug them, they're fine. But we, we had Tom Selleck, Debbie oh, Moore, yeah. Rick Ocasek, um, which unfortunately he's yeah. just gone. Oh, right. yeah. um, Terry Lewis. A lot of oh people, my God. A lot of people were in the town because it was a kind of town where they got ignored. You know, if they came into town, everybody was aloof and didn't. Uh, Final, you know what I'm saying? So, and sometimes they did movies there, like uh, because of the climate. It's, they touted it as being the best climate on earth, and it might very well be. This town is called Bisbee, and it's south, uh, south of Tombstone. It's about six miles from Mexico. So, what, what, what state? In Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. So I don't know. I would just be rattling off names of people that I met, but we've seen lots of people. George Hamilton. The bridges, one of the bridges boys, I forget what. Bow bridges. Um, 
my favorite was still Tom Selleck. <laughs> <laughs> Is as handsome, more <laughs> handsome in, like, you know, in person. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, okay, so now that you said that, I saw, I was visiting my father in, in the hospital, Columbia Presbyterian, and the elevator <coughs> opened, and Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown oh. yeah. So, because her mother was there, Sissy Houston. Wow. So, Bobby Brown wasn't really anything, he was short, and he wasn't, but Whitney Houston was much more beautiful in person. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, just gorgeous and then 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 you know I mean she's beautiful on yeah. on camera and on film but even in person she was more beautiful mm -hmm. which is which is you know this can't be captured it, yeah it's hard yeah. exactly yeah. 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 where other people yeah. like you see them in person you're like yeah yeah so <laughs> Like Tom Selleck. <laughs> Johnny Depp. We saw Johnny Whoa. Depp. Nicholas Cage was asking Whoa. crazy. He he almost I tripped coming down the stairs. He's in the hotel next door. I'm just telling stories now. But anyway, <laughs> my husband was walking across at the bottom of the steps, and Nicholas Cage tripped. And my husband almost had to catch him, and then I caught himself. But just dumb little things like that would always yeah. happen in this town. That's neat. What's the name of the town again? Bisbee. Bisbee. We called it, what did we call it? We had a, we all had a nickname. When I lived there, everybody was like the same age and they call it the world's largest open air asylum. <laughs> <laughs> that was its fond nickname. Bisbee. You know? Bisbee, yeah. Any other final questions? How do you feel, especially in, 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 on the Turtles and on the Turtle Band too, um, with so many, the constant reboots for, for the series, how, how do you feel about that? Um, like Jim in particular, or just anything? No, no, uh, I, I guess in this, Jim just have like two. Yeah, not But I'm, I'm talking more on Turtles, Transformer, um, I don't know how the franchise gets like, every two years gets a reboot, or like, um, completely starts over. What do you, what do you think about franchises that, like, the company feels like they need to have a reboot, and every time they put out something that almost feels like it's they're trying to alienate themselves from the original story or the, even the art or something, something different from the original stuff, because you started from the original black and white comics. Yeah. That's also why it started from. And, and you know, and then they did the, nine, the 89, 90s cartoon, and that was like, Pooky and funny and all that. So that probably was like the children's version of the turtles, almost like the opposite from it. But it was, um, it was their own thing. So yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't mind it. I feel like, like every, yeah. There's been like you know, so many versions of the, you know, the turtles, for example. And I haven't, I haven't seen or read like all of them, and I think that's fine. And, you know, like, there's, there's a, a new cartoon out, and it's, like, really, you know, it's, like, really cartoony and, like, really silly, I guess. And, you know, it's for little kids, and, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not the target audience, and that's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Um, and I don't, yeah, like, I don't care when they, like, change stuff, really. Because um, I feel like, I feel like every time there's, like, a new version or whatever, like, even the gem movie, you know, it's, like... Like, the gem movie was some little kid's first gem thing, right. somewhere, yeah. right. you know? Yeah. And, like, yeah, we're all like, yeah, the movie, it stinks, right. whatever. Yeah. But, like, maybe that little kid was just like, oh, gem, uh, you know, and they love the movie. And then maybe, you know, that might lead them to the show or the comic or whatever. Or maybe it doesn't, that's fine, too. Yeah. You know, like, they can just be like, yeah, you know, I only like the movie. But yeah, I, I feel I feel like every like every like iteration, no matter how terrible, terrible, <laughs> you know, it's gonna be somebody's first thing. You know, I think you know, I think that's fine. And you know, sometimes they put out like um, you know, like there was that uh, like the live action Turtles movie that came out in like 2014 or whatever it was, and it was pretty like. The, the, the sequel is actually really good. But anyway, but like, the 2014 one, it was pretty like, 
kind of like soundly rejected by you know like the fandom the public were just like ew the turtles are so disgusting and like nobody liked it or whatever but like every so often i'll be online or whatever and i will see like younger fans drawing those turtles like you know, like that's their turtles. Yeah. These these ugly, greasy, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And that's like that's fine. I think that's great. Um, you know, I hope there's a billion other you know reboots of turtles and gem and stuff. And I don't know. Yeah, it gives people jobs too. Like you know, I, like I don't know what I'd be doing if I didn't have all that turtles and gem money. You know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it, it, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, and I feel like, you know, like I love the old Turtles comics, but like those will always be there, yeah. you know, they're in my apartment, and I can, <laughs> I can read them whenever I want, you know, the gem, I can watch gem whenever I want, and it's not, it doesn't, it's not retroactively ruined or changed, right, so many people are like, uh, like, like so, so, so recently in the Turtles comic, we introduced a fifth female turtle, right? And like, you know, there's all these, all these guys coming out of the woodwork who are like, just like, Ugh, you ruined Ninja Turtles like forever. <laughs> introduced it yeah, because like, there's a girl, eh, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> like even okay, let's just pretend. There was that, a girl back in the yes, yeah. yeah, Venus, but this is a different character. <laughs> but like. Like, let's just pretend that this character, this girl turtle, somehow did ruin Ninja Turtles, right? Like, somehow on this, like, cosmic level, it's ruined, it's ruined, right? But it's like, all the stuff that we've already done and had is still there. Like, all that stuff is still good. Like, even if Gem became terrible, like, we can still yeah, like, like the movie. Some people hated the movie. Right. It didn't really fit the series yeah. is still there, and and some people just said it was their first experience. In the movie. Yeah, and like you know, say there's never another Gem thing ever. Don't say that. Let's just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter because look, like we're all still here at GemCon. Yeah. Like there's no active Gem thing right now. And, and it's like look, so you're well. here. You're <laughs> here. I got out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 I just like think, really. I just gorgeous. think it doesn't. It just doesn't really matter that much, you know. I'm like, it's like you know, bigger fish to fry. There's I think there's certain fans that are like so in love with the idea of what their gem was, and they can't deviate ever so slightly for that. And the reality is, in order to like Zavide post about this recently, like you need to sort of refresh, even just in like general packaging and like brands that aren't yes. entertainment related, you have to go through brand refreshes and keep things relevant with the times and it's always going to be too conservative or too slack depending on, you know, it's subjective. Yeah, you yeah, to, you can't, yeah, you can't, you're not going to please everyone. You can't please everyone and with, with like a lot of these franchises like, you know, Turtles especially or like Batman or something, it's like, you know, if you don't like the current thing, you just wait like six years and there's going to be another one. Yeah. You're going to reboot it again. And like maybe you'll like that one. Maybe that would be the best one. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just oh. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's a good rebooting is good. Rebooting yeah. is good, and I I feel like you know, just like there's so much like like hand wringing about you know this stuff. Like when I uh, when we first came out with the comic, you know, and I feel like I feel like. Gem fans are like a little more sensitive than like Turtles fans because Turtles fans are used to garbage. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you know, there's been so many Turtles shows and oh, movies that are terrible. Right. You know, there, you know, there was like the Turtles like concert tour. It's like we've been at the, at the bottom. <laughs> so we're you know we're used to it. But like Gem, it's like we were never at the bottom. Right. Right. Gem is like right. So I like, it's, right. It's like we didn't have the thick skin. That, like, <laughs> Have. So like I think when we came out with the gem comic, there were all these fans that like they didn't know how to handle it because they're like so new to them. Right? They're like, oh my god, like like Storm is like fat now. Oh, like, oh my god! And they're like they can't handle it, and they, they just have yeah, like you were saying, they just have like this 
this vision. And since there's never really been another vision of Jem up to that point, now there's this other vision that's supposed to be official, and they hate it. So like, what are the like, what are they gonna do? And they just, I don't know, they just like lose their minds or something. And uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they have to go to Bisbee. They have to go to Bisbee. They have to go to Bisbee. Hang out with uh, Johnny Depp, another horror movie. All right, so five questions, a statement. Um, and it's a thank you for coming and thank you for diving deep into your memories, Ruth, and your resources, Ellen, and Sophie, for, like you said, progressing us into a whole nother layer of gem and thank you for blessing us with your presence and hopefully you guys will, will come tonight and thank you for sticking around with this impromptu thank you QA yeah. Gentlemen, Ellen, Ellen Bernfeld has another surprise. Okay, here we go. Um, I have somebody on the line that uh, this is a first uh, in GemCon, okay? And I'm gonna put put this person on on speakerphone in a, in a minute and hold the mic up. And uh, this is absolutely a first. Uh, uh, 2019 will be the first GemCon that ever had all of the holograms <gasps> and all hold on i got a p1 all all right 2019 this is jamcon 2019 and it's a first folks because this is the first jamcon that has had all of the holograms and all of the misfits together wow. at a jamcon we're not here together at the same time but different times and i have on the line miss diva gray Hi, Diva. Hey, guys. Yeah. So, so Diva said to me, and maybe you know this one. She said, she said she didn't know. She said, "What character was I? Was I Kimberly?" <laughs> Kimberly. It doesn't. I know. Know. I just came in singing. Yes. <laughs> Does anybody know oh, what character? If there, she was a particular. She was on the background of. Stingers, Rapture, yes. Rapture and Mink. Yes. Rapture and Mink. Rapture and Mink. You were the background of the Stingers. Mink. 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 And, and you were. Uh, and Diva was in the holograms and in the Misfits. Yes. Yes. I was Yeah. Because the music was so good on either side. Ellen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait, my mother told me to spit out my gum. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Mama. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hold on, hold on. Mama's be mommin'. Oh, yeah. So, um, go ahead, Diva. Yeah, I'm just saying. Those are some of the most fun years I had recording because of the music, you know. Ann Bryant, of course, is brilliant. <laughs> and I got to sing with the same folks all the time, which really made our sound very cohesive. It was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, 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 what? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, Ann remembers, and I think I remember this too, that we were the, you know, Flo I talked to Florence earlier today. And, uh -huh. and so the three of us, we were the holograms, which, so we were the good girls, but then we had to flip over to the misfits and be the bad girls. <laughs> and Anne, Anne reminded me, I think you came up with the idea that when, when we would do, ooh, you know, in the holograms, that when we were the misfits, we'd do, ew. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do you remember that, Diva? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had a misfits. We couldn't even say our name without an N. Yeah. 
you were a great listener. You yeah. had that sound, girl. Oh, yeah. thank you, dear. You were a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you did. Miss it. Yeah. You did. Oh, totally. Um. Uh. You want to? I love the Misfits songs. You know. Oh, they were great. Yeah. Favorite. What? What's your? Do you remember a favorite song? Either of Jen or the Misfits. Mm, no, I'll tell you the truth, <clears throat> my brain doesn't function the way it used to. Right, right. I don't remember a lot of stuff. So. Right. Um, um, but I don't know if you know Diva's, Diva. Oh, wait a minute. This is really funny. I, I do you know what I remember. What? Twilight in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, that was a great one. <laughs> Um, good, good. good. And you know, when I met somebody a few years ago, grown woman with her own child, who was so unbelievably turned on by the fact that I, I had something to do with Jen. It was one of her favorite when she was growing up. You know, so that, that was great to bring that kind of joy to people, you know? Because it was a good show. Oh, yeah. Um, and I used to watch it sometimes on YouTube, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Anne also reminded me that Diva was the, uh, she sang behind the stingers, right? Yeah. And she did a lot of the soulful, you know, riffs and everything mm -hmm. oh, behind the stingers. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. I was the soulful singer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Yeah. yeah. Do All the world. Okay. Do any of you remember the same Starlight? Does oh, anybody okay. remember who sang Starlight? No, I, I yeah, don't. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Here we go. We Angela Capelli. Yeah. Angela. Oh, Angela Capelli. She was, yeah, okay. Angela. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Angela actually came to Maine. Yeah. Was it Maine? No. Did Angela come to Maine? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, Diva, Diva has a long history in, as it, and, you know, she did incredible studio work. You want to talk a little you bit about that? Do you guys remember the group Chic? Yes. Chic. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Well, if you, if you heard Ah, uh, Freak Out, yeah. you heard me. That's Diva. Yeah. Yeah. And if you heard uh, Dance, 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 Dance. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Clams on the Half Shell. Roller Skate. Yeah. Roller Skate. Yeah. I want your love. Yeah. I want your love. Yes. 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 So, uh, and actually, people didn't know that she was the background group for Sister Sledge. Sister Sledge didn't sing their background vocals. We did. So you, you hear, we are family. You hear me. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 The truth yeah. comes <laughs> out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. she. And also, we sang um, Greatest Dancer. Oh yeah. And people eternally mess up those words. I don't know why. <laughs> really, it's so it's it's called a oh, what wow. He's the greatest dancer, and people were singing. I wonder why. <laughs> it, was just, it was actually with my karaoke charge. You know, I wonder why. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> you know? Memory came that fast. But yeah. Okay, it's good. It's a lot of that stuff. I was, I was actually going into the disco all the same. Yay! Yeah. 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 And, and, and and Diva and I actually had a a disco record at the same out at the same time. Oh wow! Uh huh. And it, I I sang the disco version of Memory, and so did Diva. She oh, sang wow. it. Uh, who who was the the famous uh, producer who did um, the uh, Jacques Morali. Yeah, Jacques Morali. He did. Yep, exactly. Jacques Morali. She did a version with the French record producer Jacques Morali, and I did a version on uh, Profile Records. Yeah, I exactly. Warren Shaz. Yeah. So, but they were sim released simultaneously. Nice. Oh, yeah. Wow. And also, Diva. Sang. I had a band in the 80s called Ellen Bernfeld before I changed. No, I had Norma Human came before that. Norma Human and the Body People. And then I had a band called 
Ellen Bernfeld and the Babushka Band, and, and Diva sang, there was one background singer, and it was Diva. And she didn't just do back, background, she had a solo, she, she did this great operatic thing in uh, the beginning of this song called Cruel World. Um, what were you, what'd you say, Diva? Did you say something, or? No, 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 I no. Some Okay, <laughs> somebody had a question. So, um, yeah. our, our landlord has told us that in the first floor of our apartment building in Hell's Kitchen, they recorded Freak Out. Okay, so I don't know if she knows that. The, <laughs> she remembers okay, that. Like, we West, have West 52nd Street. West 52nd, his landlord said that, that in the first, in, in an apartment there was where they recorded Freak Out. Is that correct? I think probably. Yeah, maybe. Oh. There was a studio there. Yeah, yeah that's an apartment now, but it wasn't yes. a studio. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, if that would have that would have been um, Power Station. No, see that was in Power Station. Uh, but wait a minute, Power Station, power station was in Chelsea. Is in Chelsea. Oh, wow. So they may have changed. No, no, it was Fifty Second, Fifty Second Street. Yeah, Fifty Second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ask them if the name of the studio was the Power Station. Okay. Because that. That was like. It was in the 50s on the, on the west side. That's yeah. right. In, yeah. yeah. Was that's it the. Because we opened up that studio with it. Oh, yeah. That yeah. studio was like hot. The Stones recall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was open with the freak. And uh, then. Didn't we. Then. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, you know, I you, always say. Uh, yeah, stay in California. And you're in, where, where are you again? You're in. Uh, I'm in Huntington. Huntington Beach. Okay. Yeah. So that's the LA type area. So that's. No, that's, 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 that's south, south. South of LA. Yeah. yeah. I'm in, 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 i am in 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 i uh, all right, go ahead. Uh, they had a great school for Dorian. Oh, good. That's the only reason why I wound up in the Ah, oh, interesting. Because of that, like, they had a good school for Dorian. Good. And now, you know, and here I'm like, I'm, I'm close to just about everything. I'll go to San Diego, it's not far. San Diego's not far. Cool. cool. You know, well, you know, train-wise, you know. Right, but, right. You know, and if I'm LA, I can do that too. Yeah. Well, you know? Another another question? Uh, mm -hmm. So, Diva, how did you become part of GEM? Diva, how did you become part of GEM? Anne. Anne. <laughs> Anne Bryant. Anne calls, I go. <laughs> right. For, this, for anything, any Friday she had. Right. She said, Diva, I see you, I said, here I am. Mm -hmm. you know, I love, I just loved her approach to music in general, you know, so it was like easy. Because mm -hmm. you can work for some demon, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but not you, not divas like you. <laughs> yeah. People like Ann were, it was a pleasure. Yes. It's nice to work with people who know what they're doing, you know. That's right. <laughs> Always helps. Oh yeah. She's such a good musician. Yes. You know, so I enjoy it always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Thank you. It was always a fun session, wasn't it? Oh, it was so great. We had such a great time. Just, just did. a great, great time. We really did. I mean, we can't tell about all. Yeah. So this is a historic. Uh, we have just made GemCon history here, Diva. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, and and the next time we got to get us either all together or all on the phone, t all together on the phone at the same time, Florence and you and me. That would be great. Well, physically, well, be physically all together as one of the gym cars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would be that that would be a reunion, right? Yeah, it's, long, yeah, it's, long, it's, a, it's a weekend. I'm okay. Yes. Yeah. It's a weekend. That's when they do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so good. Anybody have any any final questions or anything to wrap up or you want to say, tell Diva how much you love her or whatever? We love you! Oh, thank you, thank you guys. Nothing people, a whole bunch of that right now. Thank oh. you. Oh. All right. Thank you so much, Diva. All right, see you at see you at GemCon, Diva. <laughs> All right, you be well. I will. Bye. 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 Bye.